In this video lesson, you will discover how to apply human body proportions in life drawing when portraying a model standing in contraposto. Human Body Proportions by Vladimir London Until this lesson, we were exploring how to draw a full figure, dividing its height in half and using its head and face as measuring units. But what if you have to draw just a torso with no measurements of the head and legs available to build the necessary proportions? I will now demonstrate how to do it. We can start with the tilted lines of the shoulders and pelvis. Then the curvature of the spine is marked, and the spine is divided into three equal parts. The measurement of two parts can be used to mark the points of the shoulders. One part plus one third is the measurement for the visible part of the trapezius. This allows us to mark the top outlines of the shoulders. An oval of the first pair of ribs can be depicted between this outline and the shoulder's axis. The width of the rib cage is equal to half of the distance between the shoulders and pelvis lines. The bottom edge of the rib cage goes one part and a third from the pelvis line. The breastbone takes the top third of the distance between the shoulder and the pelvis levels. The top of the pelvis inclines at the same angle as the pubic bone level. The pelvis is slightly wider than the rib cage. The pelvis's top contour is simplified as an oval. We can now build a big triangle based on two shoulder points and the navel, which is one-third from the pubic bone to the shoulder's line. The triangle's middle line goes through the end of the breastbone. The pit of the neck is connected with both ends of this line. The chest's square corners are where two muscles meet the collarbones, the chest muscles and deltoids. The base of this square is the level where the deltoid muscles insert into the upper arm bones. Two lines go from the square's top corners in parallel to the middle triangle. The two points where these lines cross the big triangle are the locations of the armpits. The armpits and the pit of the neck can be connected by the chest contour. Shoulder joints are between that contour and the top corners of the big triangle. There are three insertion points on the upper arm bone. This is where the three portions of the chest muscle end. The collarbone portion inserts in the lower point. The breastbone portion inserts into the middle point, and the abdominal portion of the chest muscle inserts into the top point. The width of the shoulders is comparable to the width of the hips, which is close to the distance from the navel to the pit of the neck or from the pubic bone to the breastbone. With all of these major proportions of a female torso in place, we can now draw the outlines and contours of the figure with the necessary precision. In contraposto, one side of a torso is stretched and the other is compressed. We can now outline the hips in a few strokes. Let's come back to the shoulders. The deltoid muscle has a characteristic outline. It covers the shoulder joint and spans from the collarbone and the shoulder blade to the middle of the upper arm bone. It inserts on the same level as the middle of the big triangle. The coracoid process of a shoulder blade is one of the points where the biceps originate. Before depicting the breast, we need to define the depth of the chest muscle. There is a virtual rectangle that lies below the front hip bones. Because a pelvis is a rigid structure, this rectangle always stays the same regardless of the model's pose. From the bottom edge of this rectangle, the quadriceps emerge. 
there is another rectangle at the lower part of the rib cage that keeps its geometry in every pose. Another challenge you may have is to connect correctly the neck and the shoulders. I'll show here how to do it. The base of the neck is defined by the oval of the first pair of ribs. From the pit of the neck originate two neck muscles. In this view, the chin is about at the same level as the seventh vertebra. The distance from the pit of the neck to the seventh vertebra fits twice into the distance from the pit of the neck to the ear. The distance from the seventh vertebra to the end of the breastbone is similar to the distance from the seventh vertebra to the top of the head. I can mark the head's outline now. The bottom edge of an ear is at the same level as the base of the nose. In this view, we see these contours from below. The distance from the chin to the nose is one-third of the face. It is also similar to the distance from the pit of the neck to the seventh vertebra. This dimension can be used to locate the eyebrow line. This line is the level for the top edge of an ear. With these proportions in place, it is now easy to locate the central line of the face and build facial features with precision. The nose is simplified as a prism. The lateral end of the eyebrow points to the bottom corner of an ear. The upper eyelids are on the same level as the bridge of the nose. The bottom edge of the lower lip divides the distance from the nose to the chin in half. The upper lip splits the top half in three parts. How to draw facial features is explained in detail and demonstrated in several dedicated video lessons of the Life Drawing Academy course. The line where the ear connects to the head is not vertical but slightly tilted. It is parallel to the line that connects the inner corner of the eye with the wing of the nose. You can see that the knowledge of certain proportions allows you to draw a torso with precision. The base of the nose is an important level. This is where the skull connects to the spine. It also helps to locate an ear. The line of the eyes divides the head exactly in half. The distance from the top of the head to the base of the nose is equal to the head's width. This is also the measurement from the chin to the eyebrows. According to one of the proportion canons, this is also the dimension from the base of the nose to the pit of the neck. It is comparable to the breastbone and to the distance from the breastbone to the bottom edge of the rib cage, and from this edge to the front hip bones and from these bones to the pubic bone. The same measuring unit can be compared to the length of a collarbone, and from the shoulder joint to the insertion of the deltoid. The upper arm is twice that measurement. The width of the head fits three times from the ground to the kneecap, and this measurement also fits three times from the hip joint to the knee. Let's check the same proportions in the torso drawing. Let's come back to the figure drawing and recap the major proportions of the body. The middle of the figure is at the pubic bone. The distance from toes to the top of the kneecap is similar to the distance from the kneecap to the top of the pelvis, and from the pubic bone to the pit of the neck. The height of the face is similar to the distance between the deltoids. It is comparable to the height of the breastbone, to the distance from the breastbone to the navel, and from the navel to the pubic bone. It fits two times into the upper arm. The distance from the top of the head to the pit of the neck is similar to the distance between shoulder joints and the width of hips. Often, it measures the width of footprints in contraposto. 
the length of a forearm is comparable to the length of a foot. From the chin to the eyebrows is the same as from the top of the head to the base of the nose. This measurement fits three times into the thigh bone. And finally, the dorsal part of the foot fits two times from the foot to the kneecap. Here's the finished artwork. See you in the next video lesson.